Okay, patient number two from the Facebook Marketplace Bargain Hall is this class 37 in the rail freight livery. I'm doing this one next, um, it's nice and big, I don't really have a big diesel that I can use every day, and I really like the rail freight livery. So, um, this one from the bundle was £5, same as a wagon, um, because allegedly it doesn't run very well, um, which is presumably just it needing a... Um, Sort of a general overhaul, so let's just try and put some power to it on the rolling road. Oh, there was a, a well, minor hints of life. You can see it's, it started off quite poorly. I don't know if you can see there are sparks coming out, um, sort of here in the corner of the motor bogey. So let's, um, let's see. It's doing this sort of straining at a lower speed. You can kind of hear. Uh, 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 uh. So I think this is a bog standard needing a sort of motor overhaul. Um, so a replacing set of carbon brushes. So I'm going to use this as an excuse to sort of do a, a walkthrough of a ring-filled motor service. So, um, yeah, let's uh, let's get cracking with that then. So, so to get into most of these old diesels, it's the same. It's just some clips, sort of one in each corner. You can see them. So if you just, so really, you can use your fingers and a fingernail if you have such a thing, just to pinch that clip out of the way. Same on the other end and give it a bit of a wiggle. Honestly, I make things look so hard. Um, incidentally, this is sort of how I tend to do a lot of things. So I'm sort of sat by my computer and I've got Spotify on. So incidentally, if I do start sort of rapping, um, it's because I'm listening to music. Oh, and the weight is loose. So, Let's pop that here. So this is how the the ring field sort of mechanism is. It's a motor and a bogey, and these are very easily removed. So if you pull this spade connector off, where it connects, and then push this clip forward, that bogey is released, and it's much the same on on this one. So it's got the motor in it. Just push this clip forward, get that off. You can plug this back in if you want to test. Um, it again, so I think, was where was that? Was that just pushed between, was it pushed around that? I think it was. And if I pop it back on here, sort of in this version. So there you go, you can see that sort of running as it is. Um, I think it's actually started running the opposite direction. I think since you have put this wire back on the other way around. So there's really not that much to it. So that's how to strip the loco down into sort of chassis body and these. Um, and next we'll get to stripping down the motor bogey, um, which I will zoom in on. And this is very much the same process for anything ring filled, so anything tender drive, anything like that. This is how to sort of tear it down and service it. Okay, there has been an adjustment. One of the first things I need to do is get out um, some new carbon brushes, which I'm gonna have in this box of sort of random odds and ends. Um, so odds and ends to do with sort of everything model railway. Here are two carbon brushes. There's sort of XO3, XO4 motor parts there. That's a buffer for a class 66. These are pulsing LEDs for the batteries, a chassis, sort of valve gear bits for a J15. Um, all sorts. And then sort of things like chocolate block, um, potentiometer extension uh, shafts. Always handy to have a box of random bits as a modeler, but we've got the uh, carbon brushes out. This wire is just fairly standard, connects to both bogies. You can disconnect it from either side you want, but let's disconnect it from this flat connector here. That's where that was connected. Um, let's put that to one side. The wheels can be cleaned on that because that does act as a pickup, but we're mainly bothered about this here ring field motor. Now, this is how it works. This brass gear is on the uh, central shaft out of the motor and it goes through these reducers and um, runs these cogs on the back of the wheels. Um, how to take this apart is relatively simple. Um, first you have to just flick this off of the gears um, and this sort of... I can't remember if this goes up or down. I think it is off the, the gears and up. Um, So we go, sort of push that off one. And then is it gonna go? There we go, it's down, it's wrong. Push it down. And there we go, that can do a bit of cleaning if you look at the goo on that. It's just a case of lifting these gears out. 
Uh, that looks in reasonably good condition, actually. And these gears will come out. These are all relatively clean. With those removed, we get our first look at the uh, armature in there, or the commutator, I think that is. And it's actually quite clean. That one looks pretty good, so there's plenty of life left in that. It must just be the carbon brushes, um, potentially. So to get those out, we kind of have to get this plate off here. So we can remove this wire here, um, which is, again, two spade connectors. So just get a small flattened screwdriver and lift it up off here, as well as you can, without tugging on the wire of course, and do the same on this side. There we go, it's off there, and then I think really with it off one side, it doesn't need to come all the way off, but sort of for the purposes of maybe getting it as clean as possible. All that wiggle all the way out. It's coming, isn't it? I'm trying to see what really is uh, holding that on. Oh, it's held onto this block here. So it really should be not that much holding these two halves of the motor together other than these clips. Now I don't like to take this off because it's plastic, so what you can do, provided you're very careful, is just lift here, lift those out. So if we do that, because what's under here are two very, very fine springs, which you do not wish to lose. Um, so let's see if I can get my, one of my pairs of tweezers, if it's going to be easily accessible. Uh, I've got a plastic set that I don't really want here. We are a metal set. So keep lifting that gently, does it? There we go. Make sure you don't lose these. There's one. Let's do the same for the other. Almost jumped, so there we go. And now the carbon brushes are in there. Now looking at those in there, I don't know if you can see, this one is sort of use that. This one is sort of turtle heading. This one. This one is a lot lower. So you'll probably find this is almost worn out, and that's almost not. So let's sort of bang these out. If they will come out, that is. Hmm. Might have to take the two halves of the motor apart, to be honest. Yeah, they aren't coming out, and I'm being careful not to mess those up. So, two halves of the motor apart, then. There's these clips. There we go. Have a little look. I think those are the only two. Really should take the bogey frames off for this, which maybe is a thing to do, but that can be a little bit tricky sometimes. So I'm going to try to do it without it. Hmm. I want to do a, a cut and some swearing, unless I can push them out. No, I'm going to have to take the uh, take the ring field block out of the chass out of the bogey here, which is something I don't think I've ever actually had to do before. So this could go one of two ways. Um, Right, it's still in camera, which is good. I have a habit of um, sort of getting carried away and wandering out of the view of the camera. Um, do keep hitting the tripod, though. Ah, oh, one brush I've almost got out. Hmm. 
which if it wants to fall out is fine and dandy by me. But sometimes you'll find that these wear in an almost diagonal way, and so they won't come out that easily. Oh, I've just pushed it in now. <laughs> Disaster. Um, right, cut, I think, and we'll um, take the bogey frame off. Right, I have done it. Right method, wrong execution. So um, if I pop my headphones off, because I had a little, look at a little guide for that, um, it was a case of just removing clips, but now you can see that this has, has come out. This um, middle axle was really loose, which I think is, is quite common actually. So, but we're just going to pull those off as it does have to come, the wheels do have to come off anyway. Um, put those over here. And now, finally, we can ease this motor casing apart. One up, two up. Gently, these two parts will come apart. Just take your time with it. There we go. Plastic can get quite sort of brittle on these older models, so it's always worth taking your time. Okay, what have we got in here? I've got a bit of polystyrene. I've got a very dirty um, part on here. Look, if you want to look at the colour of this, it's not very bright, is it? That's something that a bit of isopropyl alcohol will, will clean up. Um, other than that, it's not looking too sad actually. Um, a bit of isopropyl alcohol and a cotton bud to clean that up. What we really wanted to get out were the carbon brushes, which were these two parts. Now these are actually not looking as worn as others I've seen before, but they're sort of you can see they're not very consistent and they're also not looking like that, which is how you kind of want them to look. So that's what we're going to replace them with. Um, to do that, we're going to pop this back in here because this is effectively the axle for that middle um, gear. We're going to pop this back on. I'm going to clean up the commutator first, so I'll put it back on properly, but. Pop this back on like that and push shut. Now, yes, oh, you haven't replaced the carbon brushes that you said about. Yes, I know. Um, really, it's best to do that in this mode, I find. Now it's pushed back together and clipped back together. You can take the new carbon brushes, which, if you have massive hands like me, um, are quite easy to lose. So, pop them down like that, and then we gently, they are sort of shaped. You can see that this end is flat and this end has got slight tapering to it, so that's the, the rear end, if you will. You just want to drop those into, making sure not to introduce any fluff, drop those into the holes. like that. Now looking at how deep these are, well, I would say that the old carbon brushes, even with those springs in place, probably weren't being pushed and making great contact with that commutator. If you remember I comment on the turtle heading of one of them, that seems to have, um, it obviously seemed like it was pulled out a little, a little way. So if we now pop these back in one at a time, now this is the point where these really can start to go walkabouts, so you've really got to be careful here. I often find that putting one in like that, squeezing it flat if you can, if you dare, with a screwdriver, and popping that back in is the best, and then it's quite soft metal, so if you make any adjustments if you need to, that'll do. Do the same for this one. Just drop onto the top. It will cut the carbon brush will almost kind of hold it because of that shaping on the rear. Push it down with a screwdriver. Just trying to make sure this is kind of in focus really. I'm trying to look at two things at once and then it's escaped. Look. Never mind, lift back out the way. 
this could be a disaster. I think it's just vanished. It just pinged out of the way. It's what you would refer to as a balls moment um, and a pause and a search moment. So back in a sec. Right, I found it. It actually landed sort of there. But what I also found, interestingly enough, I said that this carbon brush looked quite a bit flatter than the others. I also found this. Look, this is the end of the carbon brush, which had obviously snapped in half, um, which potentially explains why it wasn't performing very well. So let's drop this in here. And what I'm actually going to do here is, apologies to the bad focus, but I'm actually going to not look at the camera. I'm going to look at the model that I'm working on and put that work on making sure that's right. You want those two kind of crushed the same. There we go. Hmm. There we go. Put these axles back. I'll put these wheels back on the axle rather. And put this back in the frame. should just clip back in the frame. Now this is a horrible um, arrangement, but if you look here, this is squared off, and on this end it's angled, so if you pop that one in, make sure it gets seated properly, and then push in, it should either break or should seat properly. This might be an off-camera moment again to sort of put it back in. Off camera moment again. Right, off camera, it's back together. Um, now, these two gears here, well, these are the uh, top ones. So these just need to slide behind the wheel and mesh with the gear on the back of the wheel and sit on that spindle. These ones go that way up on these two here, like so. so give everything a little half turn to mesh everything again, and then it's time to reseat this clip. So just put this in at the bottom, retract it, push it. And that's all seated properly. Now we've got to reattach is this clip. If you remember where we got it from, got it from on here. Lovely. And then push this onto here. And then reconnect this spade connector. And we're back to where we were, but hopefully it's going to run a lot nicer now, so let's give that a go. Oh, what's happened here? Has it fallen off the rolling road properly, or was it not on to begin with? It wasn't on to begin with properly. That's uh, done now. And you will want to run this in again because um, the motor is effectively new. So what we're going to do is let this run in and um, come and look at it uh, again once it's run in, much like the other one. Okay, it's later. It's actually much later. It's so much later. The clocks have changed since the last video I was filming, which means if I turn this light off, um, despite the fact it's the same time of day, it's actually light outside. You can sort of see my waving hand affect the shadows coming through the window, but I'll turn that back on because it's quite a bit nicer. Um, and it's time to put this back together. So um, this is effectively how it looks last time you, you saw it. And then this is... Um, the chassis and the weight and the body. I've got a bit of foam down here, it's just nice to protect things. I've actually been um, repairing my girlfriend's sunglasses, which is a nice practical side effect of modelling as you get very good at things like that. Um, so it's just sort of broken there, you can see that. Now, putting this back into the chassis, obviously this is where the dummy bogey goes because this motor one would not stick through that. So what we're going to do is unplug this from where it is. Now actually, if you notice where that is attached, it is attached to a um, upright on that bogey. Um, 
weight, I suppose. So pop that off there, and I'm going to put this one in first. Um, so I'm just going to feed that wire through there, and then bring it up a little closer. So you can see this has got a right angled peg and a um, angled one. So just hook that through there on that shelf and push, and it should click into place. And in much the same on the other one, you've got the right angle and the uh, more angular one. So that comes through and attaches over there, and then push up. Lovely. And then so the wire then reattaches to that upright. Just push the spade connector over it. Lovely. That's ready to go. The body. Now the body does actually go on a specific way, and so does the weight. If you notice this weight has these two cutouts in it. The body has the same, and it's not actually in the middle, so if I turn the body that way around, that then causes the um, the weight to rattle around. So that's the correct way to put the body on. Um, let's have a look. There we go, and then just sort of push it home, snap into place on all the corners like that has done. Um, and that's back together, so let's get that um, running on the layout and, and get it running in and see how that goes. Okay, it's late, it's much later, it's dark outside, that is a window. Um, the loco is down on the track in notionally what I suppose is the station. Um, the continuity on this channel is really bad. Um, it's baffling 60 plus people have chosen independently to subscribe and watch this stuff. Um, but I appreciate everyone who does, so um, thank you very much, because I find it really cool. Um, it's down, we're going to give it a test, hopefully it's better than it was, it really was not running very well at all um, when I got it. Change those brushes, obviously one was broken, um, and generally it's sort of it's fairly clean actually inside other than that, um, and I've checked the pickups as well and they're, they're fairly clean, but let's um, see how this, how this goes I guess. Let's set it to that. I think that's sort of a decent slowish speed. Class 37, not particularly quick, obviously. Now, obviously, there is some dodgy track work on here as well. Um, so let's see how it handles that. That's minus slowed. Um, it has run in a little bit since I've changed the brushes, but not um, an awful lot. It's actually every so often it's making almost a screeching, scratching noise. I think that's where the, the brushes haven't really bedded in um, yet. But, I mean, I'm pretty happy with this, and it's performing quite nice. It's slowing down around this corner, but that could well be my track. Um, I really like this. Um, I actually lied when I said I didn't have a big diesel before. I realised afterwards that I had um, this. I have a Hornby Class 66, which I actually should mention in another video. But I use this on a... There's a lot of dust on it. Oh. I use this on a diorama shelf similar to that one, which is not yet on the wall. So it doesn't really count that. So, like that. yeah, I think it's performing nicely. Um, when it's had more time to run in, and it's run for a bit longer, um, the noise should um, alleviate and it should uh, start performing a bit more consistently, but I really like that. Um, I might put some wagons behind it tomorrow and shoot a couple of final bits of film. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with this. Uh, don't have any wrong stock to go with it, so I guess it's the next job. Um, I think what well, rail freight is going to be. Uh, that's a good question, isn't it? Um, you know, I've got a uh, hopper. Should I put a hopper behind it just because? Yeah, let's do that. Let's put some stuff behind it now and then uh, come back. Okay, I had to scratch around to find some mildly appropriate rolling stock to put behind it. Um, is that one I thought had come off? Yes, I had to scratch around to find some appropriate rolling stock to run behind it, then I remember that it's my railway and I actually do this for fun. Um, so I've put behind whatever I wanted, um, including uh, one of the things I got in my Christmas stocking, the Mantua chassis that I modified to make a wagon myself, and a ratio kit that I built, which is probably the best one I've done. So um, I've put some hoppers behind it, because I think that's what would be right. Um, but there's all things, all eras behind it, and I just want to run to have a bit of I don't really have any, I don't really think we have had any trains running on this channel before, ever, so... Just thought it might be nice to get something running. It's just a bit of a train. So let's see how well it copes with a moderate load, I suppose. Um, this is quite moderate. The uh, HAA hopper at the front is something that I added ballast to 
when I was really young. I was really young. I was about twelve. So the balance is actually added to that. It's not um, what you'd normally do, like this one is, where you sort of put a bit of plastic card in it and then put a sprinkle of ballast on it. The yeoman one's true for this as well. It's it's literally just full of ballast. So it's about half a bag of ballast in there. So those are some quite heavy wagons. Similarly, that um, the the second wagon, the sort of mock pilchard thing. Um, that I built on that die-cast Mantua chassis. That's a really heavy wagon. And really, I think the loco does sound to be struggling a little bit. It could be because the traction tyres are a bit dry, so that's something maybe to change a little bit. It's just around this corner where it was performing a little bit badly on its own, actually. So maybe it's uh, something else. But, yeah, it's just a, nice to get a train running. Um, yeah, I just think that, that loco's brilliant. It needs a couple of cosmetic enhancements. Um, the buffers on... The buffers and the domino boxes on one end are broken. Uh, I guess it was dropped or something. But yeah, I'm really pleased with that. Let's see if we'll slow down a little bit, shall we? Maybe do that after this. There's definitely wheels slipping on this top corner. Oh, box van's come off. What a good time to end, perhaps. Um, yeah, so... Oh, that extra drag is really not doing too well on the loco there. So, yeah. Um, that's, that's because that's a ratio kit that I built myself. I'm not very good. Um, yeah. Well, loco number two of the what four from that Facebook haul sorted. So, yeah. Thanks for watching.